my name is Vanessa and I make art videos about a little bit of this and that. If that speaks to you, consider subscribing. Hey there guys, welcome to a vlog and classroom tour. Every time I unpack my art bag, it feels like a Mary Poppins bag. I also have my Da Vinci travel brushes. This is the Princeton Neptune, size four around. I have a collapsible cup. This is not Faber-Castell, but it's a knockoff of it. And this is what I'm working on. With a busy schedule like the average person, I try to steal moments to produce and enjoy my favorite drink and just be present with my art. So here we are at Starbucks, which is pretty typical for me. And we're just making something that I drew up a while back and I'm just going back to it as I have the time, which is on this day, to work on it. The bulk of my time to create artwork is typically on the weekends and on average I make artwork anywhere from three to four times a week. When it's on a weekday, I don't have much time, maybe anywhere from 15 to 60 minutes to make artwork. And 60 minutes is not typical, but it is a blessing to me when I do get that amount of time to work on my artwork. It makes me very happy. So when the weekend approaches, my husband and I love to go on little coffee dates or tea dates. We actually drink tea at Starbucks and he likes to produce music and I like to make artwork and we just enjoy each other's company as we do our creative outlets. I wish I could create more every day, but it's not always possible. I have learned to be okay with short sessions and days when all I can do is just watch YouTube or read a book and some days I come home drained and that's okay to give yourself a break because sometimes you come back stronger or you have more of a desire to do artwork because you've had a break from it. It's just like everything in life, you need to do it in balance. I am a true believer in having days off because for some people it can help to prevent burnout. When I was first starting my YouTube channel and thinking of a name, I had to go with art as therapy. I used to have an Instagram account. Uh, I don't anymore, but however, my hashtag always had been art as therapy and I had used that hashtag for many years, five plus years. And it's because that my art production, although it is not every day, it is consistent throughout my life and it is a part of my self-care routine. And this message is for all of you art lovers. It is so very important to invest in yourself. So I know that everyone's schedule looks different, but try to carve out time to take care of yourself, whether it is researching art images for references or researching what you want to buy for supplies that you need in your art space and even cleaning up your art area when you can't create because you only have 10 minutes to spare and you really don't feel like creating that's part of art creation your mind is wrapped up in the practice or thought of being in the art zone. Furthermore, those simple tasks may seem like they're not much, but it is helpful when you come back later, when you do have time, you have all that set up and ready, and you can just go and start producing work. You'll thank yourself later. So that's what I do some days. Some days I just look up references, clean up my studio space, and other times what I will often do is I only have time to do my sketches and I'll do my underdrawing, which is just an outline. And then I'll go back when I have more time, such as like, as you see here on a weekend, 
and I'll fill in that drawing that I have with various media, you know, with my color or some shading. And this is really one of my favorite things I like to do is do multiple outlines, fill up maybe anywhere from two to five pieces of paper in my sketchbook and then return to it when I can. I absolutely love doing this. I also want to show you another thing that I do is I will paint backgrounds. In this instance we have gradients with gouache and I had started the second layer, so the wet on dry technique, and I did pencil them in with my Pilot Inyo mechanical colored pencil and whenever I have time and I feel like painting, I will go in and complete this. Here is what it looks like at the end of my session here at Starbucks and I think it's done. I'm not too sure, but I'll go back to it if I want to change anything, but I definitely want to paint this on canvas. I really like this bag. It has so many compartments for all my essentials. And then when you flip this up, my little sketchbook fits in here. Look at that. So cool. And it has a little Velcro to keep it down when not in use. <clears throat> okay, so I decided to work with my Tombow markers, so I'm in the... I packed those, and I'm gonna draw on here. I will reveal what I drew in a sketchbook tour at a later time. I just finished my gouache mixed media part one video. I'm going to do my nails, so I need to clean up the space for now. It's all fun and games until you have to clean up. Right, Quasi? Okay, I'm not going to make or do any tattoos, but I bought this book on Amazon and I love it for lettering. I want to get into doing more lettering and I had to share it with you guys. It's another weekend and another coffee date and I'm just working on a spread that I eventually took back to my art room at home and I started working on it. So when I went home this day, I decided to work with gouache. I finally set up this little wet palette and fill it up with some of my favorite gouache and I'm very excited to use it. I love this little palette. It is convenient and it really forces me and encourages me to paint with my gouache. I absolutely love this medium. Gouache is my jam, y'all. <laughs> I love it so much. And um, I am using my Strathmore Mixed Media Sketchbook. I find that it works really well with gouache. And I've had, like I said, some issues with it. If this did not have binding issues, I would repurchase it for gouache. Getting started for today, I'm going to be doing some demonstrations. We are learning how to do two-point perspective in art one. This is the end result, so we're not starting here. This is where we will end, but we'll start off with just some basic forms. And then I am getting writing in my agenda for the day to keep myself on track and just gathering my lessons. So I'll be back and show you a classroom tour at the end of the day. Here we are in my classroom. This is the entrance and my room is fairly big. Actually, it's one of the bigger classrooms at our school. And this used to be an old auto shop, but Tempera Paint, check that out. We have student grade. <laughs> we don't go too fancy because, you know, budget wise. And what I do is I have I pour, these are dry, eek, but I pour the colors on here and then they have another paper where they mix on. It's nothing fancy, it's just, it's kind of hard to manage palettes for them to wash when you have 40 kids in a classroom. So we go with easy in here. But I have my elements of art 
principles of design. So this is the framework to our class and where we build on and on top of state standards too. We do have state standards. This is where I store all of basic supplies like rulers, glue, glue sticks, scissors, and then I have these recycled yogurt bins and I put erasers in there and then I just put a bin per table for the kids to share erasers. Paint cups, paper towels, paint brushes, and just in case we have any accidents we have to clean. There's my sink. My desk is right there. Projector to project the lessons for demos and instructions. And we have some very messy tables that we will be cleaning at the end of the year. So that just means we have done lots and lots of work. And so my classroom is not a traditional one. I don't, this is, this is the only whiteboard that I have. I don't have a whiteboard on the wall. So this is a little traveling one. I can move it around. But anyhow, I mainly put student examples on here. So right now, Art 3 is my painting class. We're working on acrylic paint on how to use, how to use it using different techniques and color schemes. And then we're in transition. So Art 1 just finished this painting for tempera paint. And then Art 2 is going into a painting unit, which we're gonna do a comic scene. But I have two drying racks and genres of different art movements throughout history. I also like to have, and I'll show you as we approach them, different posters for inspiration so they can see it coming in, going out, all around, trying to teach these kids some positivity because some of them don't come from great situations and and I want them to have a nice place to to be. And we're in transition of reloading this wall with artwork. I've had to put a hold on putting up artwork because my neighbor right here, they're testing. They're doing like state testing, so it's too loud for the hammer. But look at there's Tupac. This one is stylized, but it's so adorable with the Avengers. So just some artwork. This is a freshman that was in Art 1, but I bumped her up to Art 2 for obvious reasons. She's super talented and she has so much potential, so I can't wait to see what she does over the years. But this is mixed media, the watercolor with ink on top. Experimenting with this like impasto technique and they are experimenting with different texture. It's the molding gel with acrylic. And this is an art one. Look at this, this is an AP student, really good. She's super good. And that's her piece here. And so AP, they're working on a theme for their portfolio that they have to submit to the college board. And every kid has a different theme that they're, they're working on. Their themes are typically higher level, deep meaning, nothing surface level. This student is in art too, but I'm gonna bump her up to AP next year. She's very talented. As you can see, this is graphite. Okay, so maybe later I can post a new wall picture, but that's it for now. All right, so I actually um, filmed this later on, a few days later, and here's an updated wall shot. And then I have due dates for my art four and AP class. And I won't zoom in on there, but there's pictures of the kids I've had over the years. 
some more art movements. I like to decorate, like I said, with different artwork and motivational pieces. It says, grow through what you go through. Everything you don't know is something you can learn. It doesn't matter what others are doing, it matters what you're doing, and that is so true. For young people and <laughs> beyond, all of us, it's good for all of us. Now, I wanna show, oh, this, it says, your attitude determines your direction. This cabinet was painted on the left side my first year of teaching high school, and then this one was done maybe a year before COVID, and this student, she got a full ride scholarship to SCAD University, and she, um, as you can see, was a phenomenal artist. This only took her less than two weeks, and let me come in. But it is so beautiful. It's stunning. She just went in, drew it out, and started painting. Incredible, incredible student. But she ended up declining the offer because she had to stay home to help her mom because she had an illness. But too bad it didn't work out. And then this one was also painted my first year. It's a candy land. We never finished it, but that's okay. We can finish it before I retire. I have maybe about 15 more years before I retire. And then this is adorable. It's Kirby. We store our acrylic paint in here. So each table gets their own bin. I have some primary, secondary colors. They scoop it out on their mixing palette and mix their colors. Here we have my station right here. I have all my, these are all my lessons that I'm currently going through. So like handouts, student examples. Um, this is where my TA sits. There is my desk. And then I have just miscellaneous stuff that I need, paperwork that I need acrylic paint where the main paints are and then these are all my lesson plans this is like 16 years of my life <laughs> this is so important to me it's like my child it's paper but this room is very special to me it's like a home away from home because I've been I spend so much time here cutting board this thing I believe is older than me but hopefully I'll get a new cutting board shortly but this is a work in progress from an AP student we're building the underpainting oh boy this is my storage room lots of acrylic we have textbooks printmaking when we do our printmaking unit canvases still life images for still life drawing and just a little bit of everything. Eventually I want to organize this a little bit better and label things, but this is as it is right now. I have my own refrigerator and microwave for the days that I have to stay late. So sometimes I have to work very late for after school supervision duties that we are required to do, but here it is, here's my storage space. And so as I was saying, this room is, I've spent my youth here. I've spent a lot of my time working with kids, trying to inspire them, them inspiring me. I'm gonna sit at my desk. And we work together to, to make art. And so teaching is so much more than art. It's or teaching is so much more than your subject area. It encompasses counseling, you become their p second parent or a parent because some of them don't, they have guardians or they're in foster care. We laugh, we cry in here, we get through the beautiful times and the ugly times together. But the main thing that I want coming through here is to show kids how to be 
a nice human being and art is a bonus. So if I can get them to learn something that would, that is wonderful. But the main thing I do in here is build connections with them and remind them that they are capable of doing more than they know. So I am a big believer in that. And so that's why I build my channel too, is to hope to bring positivity to people and don't give up. <laughs> Mistakes are expected and respected. And today is another chance to be better. I wanna thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful and creative day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.